Hey guys, it's coming in another movie for you guys. Now, this movie reviewing, this is a movie that I was definitely really intrigued by, to say the least. I was definitely really looking forward to it, and uh, despite all of the negative feedback that it's been getting, I still was very interested in that movie, and finally I've seen it, and that movie is none other than The Girl on the Train. If you guys remember back in the October movie preview, I was in the minority with this movie. Everyone, um, like, like 22 Tiger Dude, or The Random Eric, or Adam Haskell, None of them wanted to see it. They thought it looked generic. They thought it looked boring. They just were not interested. They thought it looked unintentionally funny. I, however, was interested in this movie. I thought this movie had some stuff in there that I definitely was really looking forward to. And uh, I went into it uh, still a little bit worried because of the reviews it's been getting, but still kind of hopeful. And I have to say that The Girl on the Train is not nearly as bad as they thought it was going to be. But it's not nearly as good as I thought it was going to be either. This movie is okay. I will definitely say this movie is okay. It's very much a throwaway mystery thriller that you've seen before that sets up some really compelling ideas, but in general just doesn't really build on them in the way they should have, if that makes any sense. But let's just get into the plot of The Girl on the Train. Because the plot of this movie is genuinely very interesting. I actually really do like the plot of this movie. That's one of the reasons I was most looking forward to it, actually, is because of the plot. Basically... We focus on this girl, uh, played by Emily Blunt, Rachel Watson. She is this uh, very bad alcoholic who is very damaged and has a lot of problems, and she is basically obsessed with uh, this couple. She spends most of her days on this train, basically, um, where she constantly looks at this couple, Scott and Megan Hipwell, who she feels is in a perfect marriage, which she's not. She's, you know, divorced with her husband and everything. And one day, this girl that she's obsessed with, Megan Hipwell, who, like I said, she sees as everything that she wishes she would be, suddenly goes missing, and eventually, Rachel finds herself in a missing person sort of case in which she is the prime suspect for possibly murdering Megan Hipwell, and that is the basic plot of The Girl on the Train overall, but there's a lot more of this movie than that. Let's just get into the acting so I can really get into what I liked about the movie. So, the one reason that I was most interested in this movie is not because of the plot or because of the way the movie was done, it's because of the cast. I just thought with a cast this good, the movie could not be bad. It just, the cast was good enough for the movie to be really good, and I have to say that is definitely the case. The cast is by far the best thing about this movie. In fact, Emily Blunt, it, um, specifically, is, I think, the best thing about it, because her character, Rachel Watson could come across as very one-dimensional, which she kind of is. The way she's written is very one-dimensional, but Emily Blunt did a really good job at really getting into this role, and they set her character up to be very interesting overall. I mean, this is someone who constantly is just analyzing this couple and wishing she could be like them and talks about their life and things like that and how she spends her day on the train and just a very intriguing character the way that, that was done. You really do care for her. You know, she's this alcoholic and she has a lot of problems, but at the same time, you really can understand where she's coming from. So I thought overall she did a really good job with that. And Emily Blunt in this movie had some absolutely incredible scenes. I really thought she did a really great job here. Some people have said she's even Oscar worthy. I wouldn't go that far, but she really did give a great performance. I think even some of the scenes where she's given ridiculous stuff to do, which I'll get into, I think overall she did a really good job. I really love what she had to do in this movie, and uh, it honestly might be one of my favorite performances I've seen from any actress this year. She really did do a great job here, and I never thought she was too over the top. I really found her to be very believable. You understood why she felt that way, and you also understood her obsession with Megan and you know what her obsession was there. I thought was really well done. I thought overall she did a really great job. The problem is the rest of the actors in this movie, while good, are nowhere near as good as her. Haley Bennett as Megan is a very interesting character. Unfortunately, she does not have a ton to do in terms of, you know, interesting stuff. I just found her character to be very, very plain, and I get that that's the point, that she's supposed to be pure and everything, but there, she just wasn't that interesting to me. I found her to be very basic, and there just wasn't really anything interesting about her, and it kind of sucks when the movie, you, uh, she's, you know, such a big part of the movie, and she is, you know, the sole, um, basically, focus of this movie is a lot of it is on her. I just found her to be a very uninteresting character. Now, there are some things with her that are very interesting, like how she doesn't feel like she has any spark in her marriage or things like that, but they don't really dive deep into it like she should. And Haley Ben, in general, I just felt was very uh, generic in the role. She didn't really seem like she was into it. Rebecca Ferguson, I thought, was really good in this role as Anna, who is um, the 
person that uh, Tom cheated on when that caused him and Rachel to get a divorce. And I thought overall she did a really good job. I like the hatred that Rachel has for her. But you also understood that Anna is a real person. I thought overall she was really good here. She definitely did do a very good job. So these three women, a lot of the movie is riding on them. Blunt is definitely the best of the three, but Rebecca Ferguson is good. I just thought in general their acting was a lot better than what their characters gave them, which we'll get into. Now, Justin Thoreau is an actor that I really, really do like. You guys know that I'm a huge fan of Leftovers. It's probably my favorite show on TV right now. And I think that he's a very um, competent actor. He's very good at what he does. His character in this movie, though, is Tom, is ridiculous. I mean, this is a very one-dimensional, uh, just savage... Uh, Basically, just your typical alcoholic, beat-down uh, dick, basically. That, that's all he really is, and he's just here to be a dick. He's just here to cause problems, and I really did not find myself getting into his character, especially when a certain thing happens in the third act. I really lost interest in him. I wanted to like Joseph Thoreau in this movie, but I found him to be very, very one-dimensional, very predictable, and I just really was not a fan of him. So Justin Thoreau was probably the worst in this movie, in my opinion. Luke Evans, I thought, had some good stuff to do. They just didn't really utilize him that well as Scott, who uh, sort of becomes involved in stuff with Rachel, but not really. I thought overall he was okay. Allison Janney is great in this movie. I really liked her as a detective in this movie, who a lot of the best scenes in this movie is her questioning Rachel, you know, would she actually kill Megan, things like that. I thought all of their stuff was very compelling, but again, they barely focused on her. So she only has about one or two scenes, and it kind of sucks, so she was one of the best parts of this movie. And the trailer made it look like she was going to have a lot of stuff to do, and she barely has anything to do, really. I mean... If I can recall, she had about maybe 10 minutes of screen time in the entire movie, and I found her to be very good in what she was great. She was, the stuff she's in, she's great in, because, I mean, she's Allison Janney. She really can't give her bad performance, but in this movie, I just felt that she was very, very snubbed. She could have a lot more to do, and unfortunately, most of what I, you know, most of what you see in the trailer is what she has to do in this movie, which kind of sucks. Uh, Edgar Ramirez, I thought was good as well as Dr. Abdick, who, uh, it, Megan is in an affair with. I thought overall he was okay too. Again, just not a ton to do. And that really goes to the rest of the cast in this movie. They're all very, very good, but they're just very underutilized. They don't have stuff to do, and that mainly is because of the way the directing and the screenplay is done, which let's get right into that. So like I said, the acting in this movie is really good. I think the actors really did try to do some good stuff with their roles, and honestly, even the ones that didn't work for me, they at least tried. Like Justin Thoreau tried, Haley Bennett tried. I thought overall everyone definitely did try. The problem with this movie is the directing and the screenplay. The way this movie is executed is very, very strange to me. It seemed like they were trying to be a bunch of different things, but they didn't really know what they wanted. That mainly is, is because of the directing by Tate Taylor, who... The way this movie starts out, it starts like it's going to be a very well-done mystery thriller, and it's going to be very interesting, it's going to be very compelling, but Tate Taylor takes it in a very strange direction that almost at times feels like a Lifetime movie. It really does, and I think his directing this movie was just very off. There are so many things that he tried to do with this movie um, in terms of suspense, in terms of thrills, and I really don't think he understood what this movie really needed to be. I think if you had a much different director, you could have done something a lot better. I mean, this is someone who did The Help, and that's a very different movie than this, so maybe it's just that he doesn't really know how to do these kind of movies. Movies, but I really think they chose the wrong director. I don't think he was the right person to direct this movie. He really did not understand uh, the material and the way this movie is supposed to be done, so his directing really was not that great. And the screenplay as well is probably my biggest issue with this movie because the way this movie is structured is very odd to me. I think the, the structure, there's a lot you can do with it because the movie starts off, you have Rachel talking and they give a monologue to her. Then they cut to Megan having a monologue. Then they'll cut to Anne having a monologue. And it just became very convoluted after a while because then they eventually abandoned those monologues and decided to just kind of like meander the rest of the movie. And they took what could have been very compelling there and they completely just take it away. And I don't really know why they did that. I thought it would have kind of been cool if they maybe did those three perspectives, and that's something that I think could have really added to this movie that they didn't really do, and I don't know why they kind of got away from that. I overall thought that could have been really interesting if maybe we got into their heads more, but no, the movie chooses to kind of just focus on Rebecca, and that's basically my main problem with this movie. Because the movie's so focused on Rebecca, oh, uh, not Rebecca, yeah, on Rebecca, not Rebecca, Rachel, I mean, uh, which, who is a very interesting character, like I said, uh, they don't really get to dive deeper into the other characters, and a lot of the 
characters in this movie are either very snubbed or they end up being very, very cliche. And that's something that the movie really didn't do very well. I think the screenplay in this movie is very jumbled. It's very messy. They constantly cut back to like three years ago or one year later or last night. And it just, it became very annoying after a while. Like the movie just couldn't stay under control. It kept going back and forth between the present and then. And it gets very confusing after a while because I couldn't tell what's the present and what's now. They didn't really do a good job at differentiating it, and I feel like they could have done a much better job with that. That was something I really was not into. I did, however, think they did a pretty good job with setting up the case in this movie, the way they set up her obsession with the couple, the way they set up, you know, Megan's relationship with her husband, and the way they set up things between Tom and Anna are overall really, really well done. That's stuff that I thought they did really, really well here. The problem is, after the case is set up, the movie really does not know where to go from there, and uh, that's something that I really had a big problem with. I think the movie gets very, very repetitive. You see so many of the same scenes. You keep hearing the same things over and over again. Oh, Rebecca's a drunk. Oh, Rebecca has problems. I keep saying Rebecca. Oh, Rachel has problems. Oh, she's a drunk. All these different things with her, and the movie just didn't really know where to go from there. When it is eventually revealed what the twist was, it was probably as predictable as you could imagine, and it really did take me out of the movie, I have to say. I'm not going to spoil it, but just think of the most predictable twist you could think of. That basically is the twist of this movie. I knew from a mile away where we were going to go with the twist, and it was very predictable to me. I found it to be very much uh, just the most predictable direction they could have done. They really could have done something a little, a lot different. Because I had a thought earlier in the movie what I thought was going to happen, and I felt like it could have been a lot more interesting if maybe they did something different than what ended up happening. And I'm not going to spoil what it was because it's really not that interesting. If you guys want to know what I'm talking about, just ask me in the comments, you know, what I think would have been a better direction for the movie, because I just think it would have been a lot better if they did that, um, but unfortunately, the movie completely salvaged any kind of opportunity to be different or interesting, and after that twist, it really did take me out of the movie, I have to say. A lot of times, I'm like, okay, it was a twist, I kind of saw it coming, but it worked, and it just did not work at all. I think it was completely the wrong direction for the movie. I don't really think it went for the rest of the story the movie was trying to tell, and it really did not work, and if you guys, I, I actually will talk about spoilers if you guys want to know about that. Um, but the cinematography in this movie is good. I think the cinematography was overall very well done. Definitely a little bit too much of the filters and things like that. They definitely couldn't keep it under control. This is a movie where constantly Rachel's having visions and things like that and all this stuff that's going on. The cinematography was very convoluted at times, but I thought overall he did a pretty good job with it. I liked it overall. And the score by Danny Elfman is really, really good, I have to say. I think overall his score, he definitely did a good job with. I really did like the score of this movie. And the editing to this movie is very choppy like I said they constantly are cutting back I don't know why they keep cutting back to this day or that day or this day I mean a lot of the stuff they come back to we don't really need to see we could have easily heard about or just like a brief thing of we didn't need all of these flashbacks in the way the movie wanted to do that I don't really know why the movie was structured that way and that really was one of my biggest complaints this movie is the way the movie was structured which I really do think uh easily took me out of the film in the way it shouldn't have and let me address the elephant in the room. This movie really is nothing like Gone Girl. I know constantly this movie has been compared to Gone Girl and things like that. I really did not get that from this movie. I found this to be a wannabe like Gone Girl. This, this wants to be a Gone Girl type film. And for the first act, I think overall it did a good job at standing out on its own. But like I said, in the second and third act of this movie, it really tries to be a bunch of different things, of many of which work and many of which don't. And there definitely is some compelling stuff in there, like what this movie has to say about pure love and what the movie has to say about someone who's gone through tons of shit and things like that. And the way they even said the mystery aspect, there is some really great stuff in there. I think, honestly, if the movie maybe would have had a more competent director and a much more uh, better focus than the movie did, the movie really could have been something great. Honestly, I don't not just good, I think it really could have been great. I mean, it's based off a book that I heard is great. I don't know why the movie isn't great, and I'm very surprised it didn't turn out nearly as good as it was. But now, very quickly, I do want to get to the spoilers in this movie because I really do want to talk about what happened and what I wish should have happened. So if you guys haven't seen The Girl on the Train, you are interested... I would say check it out. I would say check it out. I think if you're interested, it's 
an interesting movie. It's just the direction they go in I personally didn't like. Maybe you guys will like it, but it really did not work for me. But I'd still say check it out. Uh, it's not a terrible movie. I definitely will say that. Uh, but if you guys want to watch the rest of my review, just wait for the spoiler tag to go off, and then I'll say my grade at the end, and then you guys will go from there. But let's get into the spoilers for this movie. So, very early on in the film, when they were talking about how Rachel is an alcoholic, and how she showed up, and there was, like, blood everywhere, you know, she was going to confront Megan, I thought, okay, Rachel killed Anna. That's what I thought was going to happen. I thought they were going to reveal that Rachel killed Anna because she was jealous, and she killed her out of jealousy or something like that, or because she wanted the baby for herself. That's what I thought. Then I thought that, okay, maybe she killed Megan, because think about it. Megan was everything Rachel wanted her to be, you know, Megan seemed like she had her shit together, Megan seemed like she had a loving husband, it just seemed like everything was going so great between Megan and Scott to Rachel when she didn't know that Megan actually didn't really like Scott that much, that they really didn't have much of anything, that Megan constantly cheated on him, that was something I thought could have been really compelling if Rachel would have been the one to actually kidnap Megan or something like that because she wanted to be like Megan and she doesn't understand why Megan had the life she did, because you know, Rachel didn't know all this stuff that was going on with Megan. She only took Scott because she wanted to go more into their relationship. And unfortunately, the movie did the most predictable thing possible, and it made Tom the killer of Megan. Not only is Tom the killer of Megan, but no, he's had sex with basically every single female character in this movie, and it was completely ridiculous. I don't know why they decided to do that in this movie. Basically, every character in this movie ends up having sex with someone, and Tom, in general, I found to be so boring after this. I found to be so aggravating, and I found to be just so predictable. Of course it would have been Tom. Of course he would have been the one to kill Megan. I don't know why they decided to go in this direction with him. And then the fact that Rachel killed him and Anna killed him, it just didn't really go with the rest of the movie. Especially Anna. Anna wasn't believing Rachel. Why all of a sudden did she believe Rachel? Didn't really make much sense to me. I don't really know why she didn't just believe her from the start. I mean, and it just didn't really work in the way they wanted to, and it just felt very, very convenient with Anna getting away and Rachel and Anna now having this connection. I did like the way the movie ended with Rachel kind of restarting out her life, but after it was revealed that Tom was a killer, I, it completely took me out of the movie. I really was not interested after that, and I feel like the movie could have done a lot more if they maybe made Rachel a killer. It would have just been a lot more interesting. The way the movie was setting it up, I thought Rachel was going to be like a sociopath, but they just didn't really do it with her. She's just, no, some angry drunk who did something she's not proud of, but oh no, she did nothing that bad, because God forbid we actually make her character interesting. I really think ruined a lot of the movie, and they could have easily made her the killer, and it would have been a lot more interesting if they did that. So it's not really an example of the way they did the twist, because they could have maybe made the to twist with Tom good, but they barely go into it. They make him the most shallow of characters possible, and because of the fact that they didn't really dive deeper into these characters, his twist really didn't make no sense, and it really just seemed like they put it in there because they didn't really know how to end the movie. That's just what I got from it. Maybe you guys liked it, but that really was my take on how I felt about the twist overall. So far, guys, while the girl on the train, I think, does introduce some things that I think are very interesting and some topics that I really thought the movie could have gone into very well. The movie barely focused on it, and towards the end of the movie, like I said, it very much take, took me out of the film, especially because of the twist and the way that things were done. I would recommend you see this movie. I don't think this is a terrible movie. I think it's a very okay film that really could have been great, And I, but I am overall going to give the girl on the train a 2.5 out of 5 or a C. But anyways, guys, I'm already the girl on the train. Let me know if you guys thought this movie have seen it. Love to your thoughts on it. Did you like the twist? Did you like the direction the movie went in? What did you think of the performances? I'd love to your thoughts on all that stuff. But that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in my next one, which will be for another movie review. And we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.